Operation Pakistan. Operation Pakisa is really a, a problem-solving, uh, fast-tracking methodology. Uh, we adopted and adapted uh, the Malaysian Big Fast Results methodology and we really South-Africanized it and uh, hence the term Operation Pakisa. Pakisa in uh, Sutu means hurry up. We developed very detailed plan, detailed three feet delivery plans. When we interrogated these sectors in July to August in 2014, with all the relevant stakeholders, because one thing we also recognise that as government alone, we cannot unlock the economic potential of this ocean space. We have to work with our stakeholders uh, and all the role players from uh, government departments, the various government departments, the state-owned uh, entities, uh, the academics, uh, the NGOs and CBOs, as well as labour organisation. And of course, most importantly, the private sector because they are the people that really create the jobs and are contributing through their investments uh, to the uh, economy or to the ocean's economy. This is the nine-point plan uh, of government, uh, ocean's economy, and uh, as a Department of Transport, we are responsible for marine transport and manufacturing initiatives, 18 initiatives. Out of the 18 initiatives, there are three segments. You've got a port-based infrastructure, you also have a skills development as well as economic growth. Transnet has invested about 1.2 billion rands to buy a nine tags uh, from SA Shipyard. And uh, out of that project, 700 million rand was put aside uh, to make sure that uh, they, they develop the supply development program uh, for small SMMEs. Uh, currently, there are about 13 SMMEs that have been developed through that uh, initiative. Through the engagements of Operation Pakisa, we said we need to have a local content uh, of 60% on any marine fleet that is going to be built in this country. This initiative is driven by uh, DTI uh, to make sure that we cultivate and build the capacity and the capability of this country when it comes to boat building uh, so that we can be able to even export our our capabilities to the world. So we also have achieved uh, 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 about four registered vessels under Initiative 18, whereby we are saying that uh, uh, since now, the Department of Transport has, has, ha has, a, has a, an approved comprehensive maritime uh, transport policy. That will then strengthen the ship register of this country. What has Operation Pakisa sought to achieve was to make sure that a uh, government does not work in silos. Uh, we are able to work as a, as, as a unit. Uh, for instance, in executing this project, we are working uh, with other government departments, uh, uh, the Department of Public Enterprises, for example, Department of Trade and Industry. Uh, there are other in entities that we refer to as implementing agencies. We will attract investors. All of the investors have been out to South Africa looking to develop power, pipelines, uh, the, co the construction, storage, port side facilities, floating storage, regas units. But the main players are going to be the LNG importers who would lead these consortia. These oil and gas opportunities are the opportunity to put significant numbers on GDP, to employ significant amounts of people, not directly in the oil and gas industry, but in the downstream effects of that industry, in the services industries, in the services companies, um, and downstream because people have certainty around power and electricity. Reliable electricity drives growth. There's no question about that. 
and <clears throat> bringing in gas is the first step to bring um, a gas economy to South Africa. After that, we will explore for oil and gas, I hope, and I obviously hope we will find it. At the beginning, what you do is you drill for data, and the data is what you use to make informed decisions on whether there is uh, pro uh, a prospect. We were very excited because we see South Africa as, uh, yeah, as a great gateway to energy markets. And uh, also for us, we saw your landscape, so the South African landscape uh, from a refinery perspective. And it's pretty all the refineries, so we know at some stage refineries will stop with a production and it will become an import country which is a strategic location for the Western Cape is Cape Town. So for a terminal business as VTTI, we always look at um, strategic locations, locations that make sense, that can actually be there for many years, trying to get a local uh, project financing. Uh, so far, VTTI has, uh, has uh, gave us this loan to actually build it. Um, if I look at the energy market here uh, in South Africa, uh, I think it's a very exciting place to, uh, to do business. In terms of projects in this area, uh, DTI provides a number of incentives from uh, uh, tax holidays to critical infrastructure to providing a dedicated industrial development zone in Saldana for ship repair, uh, for shipbuilding, for oil and gas. Uh, we're also looking at the, uh, a greater marketing strategy rollout together with the industry. We recently participated in the OTC in Houston where we took uh, 12 companies together with Sagoa uh, to raise the platform and the value proposition of opportunities in this new frontier uh, of investment as a new sector in the ocean's economy, uh, which we believe we can unlock uh, on the west coast of Africa and also on the east coast of Africa, using South Africa as a hub, as a regional hub into the continent. One of South Africa's newest shipping interests. Um, we spent a lot of time over the last couple of years, and particularly once uh, Operation Pakisa came into being, the greatest success that we've had to date lies. Um, firstly, in the cadets that we've placed on these ships and then rotated off and replaced. Um, how they've graduated and seeing how they are now moving into permanent employment, both on our ships and elsewhere. Saimi manages and coordinates five working groups, bringing together education and training providers, ocean economy delivery units, industry representatives, and academic specialists in order to develop an integrated national plan. The Saimi is a direct outcome of the Operation Pekisa's Oceans Economy. All sectors of society are partners. The oceans and the ports are a gateway into our economy, and South Africa is gifted with about 3,000 kilometers of pristine coastline from KZN to Eastern Cape to the Western Cape. And we have a complementary community of eight commercial ports. When the president introduced Operation Pakisa in October of 2014, we realized just how much of potential we needed to unlock so that it contributes to our GDP and it talks to the National Development Plan, especially our three principles which we want to eradicate, poverty, unemployment and inequality. We are also about making sure we build capability with harnessing and unlocking the true potential of our blue economy and creating jobs to entice people to come in and understand what this blue economy is all about. Port of Richards Bay established only in 1976 primarily for the export of 26 million tons of coal over the first 10 years. The port is one of the newest ports within the authority stable. And we had to go and test the market. We've done so successfully and the response is that at this stage uh, the floating dock will do in Richards Bay. The Richards Bay Industrial Development Zone neighboring the port is in the process of constructing a techno park.
The most interesting one, I think, is in the area of offshore oil and gas exploration. Um, as we all know, there's a lot of exploration going on on the east coast of KZN and further up north in Mozambique and Tanzania. Um, so that presents a lot of opportunities for uh, things like ship repairs, because there'll be a lot of activity ship repairs and also repairs and, and manufacturing of those rigs that they're using um, in the exploration. SMME support is an important element of the IDZ. We've worked at IDZ on two projects now. The first one was SPS, which we're doing brickwork, formwork and uh, uh, scaffolding. Right now we are busy on the exhibition, exhibition hub, where we are doing the brickwork, the plaster, tiling, curbs and the uh, paving. Innovative South African companies such as MoCore and SBS Manufacturing are situated within the IDZ. The Port of Durban is South Africa's premier multi-cargo port and is counted among the busiest ports in Africa, handling over 80 million tons of cargo per annum. Operation Pakisa Ocean's Economy projects include the repair and refurbishment of dry dock and floating dock infrastructure, related equipment and cranes. Where we're standing right now, we're standing over the Altai Kesen which was recently being uh, refurbished through the Operation Pakisa. Uh, we have spent around about 30 million in this project. We have appointed a local company, which um, we have employed more than uh, around about um, 80 um, employees. The Ports Authority has awarded a tender for the building of the new Durban Cruise Terminal. Currently, we are at um, the current cruise terminal, which is known as Enshed. It's approximately 3,000 squares, of which in the past financial year, we have handled approximately 59 vessels and approximately 200,000 passengers through this terminal. The cruise industry, uh, uh, the average growth of the cruise industry is approximately 11%. It's the fastest growing tourism industry in the world. Training is a priority for the Transnet Ports Authority. The Durban MSOE has state-of-the-art dredging simulation training facilities for the training of seafarers. Southern African Shipyards has a proud and illustrious history in the South African shipbuilding industry. SA Shipyards, amongst their other important achievements, they were awarded a tender to build nine tugs for the Transnet Ports Authority. They are committed to skills development in the maritime industry. mechanical engineering and making as a trade yam. applied via municipality. There was an opportunity available since uh, Operation Pakisa awarded the uh, tender the, this, this project of the tenders to SA Shipyards via Transnet. So the uh, opportunity came available for me. Then I applied via Terrini Municipality and a Terrini Maritime class, and then I, I got the, that's how I got to here. The maritime industry has a multitude of opportunities available for women and men alike. South Africa celebrate the first female black women who qualified as master mariners or ship captains, the highest professional qualification for a seafarer, enabling the holder to be in command of a vessel of more than 3,000 gross tonnage. So with SAMHSA, um, having created such an initiative to um, have this cadetship program, it, it, it has actually boosted the South African capacity creation for seafarers out there. So yeah, I will, I will commend that really. It has made a tremendous change and I'm sure a lot of us can, can attest to that. For South Africa, South African maritime industry to, co to comply with the international standards, we have rules that are set out by the IMO. So SAMHSA is part of those rules which says that South Africa, they have to have an administration uh, uh, office which is as SAMHSA. And then for anything and anything to happen on, you know, within the maritime industry, if you're building your, your ships, you're building ships from scratch, 
you need a SAMHSA surveyor, you have to build to our standards, if not those of, of the classification society. So uh, we play a big role because uh, we are the, the safety authority. We make sure that anything and everything that gets done within the maritime industry is done in a safe manner to the people, to, to the, the, the environment uh, as well. So yes, without SAMHSA, not a lot can go on. Dormac launched their floating dock ship repair facility in 2016 with a substantive investment which included a tax incentive from the Department of Trade and Industry. We've got an enterprise development program uh, focusing primarily on medium and small businesses that goes back many years. Again, like the training program, was driven out of operational need rather than uh, the BEE policy on economic, uh, uh, enterprise development. So you find that we've taken businesses that we'd like to empower or we'd like them yeah. operationally and economically to manage on their own and work with us with a common goal. We've taken them and developed them. So in other words, Domac would spend all the capital, the equipment, the machinery, the trainees, and they would operate, they would ac access that resource within this yard. And in fact, we give them premises within the yard as well. So our support for those businesses, and it so happens that the majority of them are black owned. So, and very good at what they do, because they are, they wear the DOMAC uh, overall. As far as the client is concerned, they're dealing with a DOMAC uh, supplier. I'm going to say that I'm training to be a trainer and welding. So welding, I'm going to be a trainer and I'm going to the Makuti is a government-owned dredger that sank off the coast of Baira, Mozambique, and is currently being refurbished by Dormac repair facilities in Durban. The Port of East London is situated at the mouth of the Buffalo River and is the only commercial river port on the South African coastline. The vision um, behind Operation Pakisa for the Port of East London was to improve infrastructure and to, to build, build, build capacity and to improve operational efficiencies. Um, a result of that will, will basically lead to uh, in, um, an increase in um, um, contractors that, that do utilize the port as a result, they'll employ more people. As a result, then more jobs will be created, um, growing the, the, the local economy as well. We have five Pakisa projects, which is um, basically your, your switch gear, switch gear project, your crane rails project, um, the, the cranes upgrade and the refurbishment itself. We also have the, the compressor room phase two package, as well as our, our capstans and, um, and our, our booster pumps. The establishment of the training college for Operation Pakisa as part of our setup within the Port of East London. The training college that we will be opening up will be an extension of our Marine School of Excellence. So whatever subjects they are offering or whatever courses they are offering, we will be in association with them as well. And but the, the, the mere reason for that is because the courses that they are offering is already accredited, SAMHSA accredited. So the exact same courses will be SAMHSA accredited in the Port of East London as well. Our main focus with Operation Pakisa and with the, um, with the establishment of the training college is actually for youth development within and around East London to create opportunities for our youth that do not have opportunities to study further. The Port of Port Elizabeth is a geographically well-positioned, customer-centric, multi-cargo port that is the gateway for expanding markets. We have a facility for uh, boat refit and repairs. We have uh, flexible working hours uh, in, the offer, in the offering. Uh, we are technologically advanced in terms of uh, boat hoist operation 
and uh, we are open for business. <laughs> we are uh, geographically well positioned uh, as a port of Port Elizabeth and, that, and so that we can actually serve the markets on both, both east and west side of, uh, of the globe. For basically, the vierde april dat ons ons eerste boot uitgebring was die candle en tot die eerste december met ons 72 boots uitgehaal. Uh, Saimi is a direct outcome of the Operation Pekisa's Oceans Economy. Um, oceans Economy, I would like to call Oceans Revolution. Um, it really is a revolution that I have gone through two or three times before in other countries, in Australia, in the UK and in Malaysia. Um, and it is fascinating to be part of this, uh, this revolution, as I called it. Um, where we will see the whole of government, uh, not only one particular department, but the whole of government involved in promoting this uh, uh, initiative. What Saini does is that we provide support in terms of skills development, uh, research um, and advocacy. We don't provide any training, uh, but we work with the universities, all universities who've got interest in maritime area in, in South Africa to make sure skills which are required by the industry are available at the right time. As part of that, we run the National Cadet Program um, where we have about 220 cadets within the program at the moment. Uh, they study at the national universities, uh, CPUT, DUT and Nelson Mandela University. And when they complete the underpinning knowledge that they need to become a ship's officer, they would join Saimi and we would place them on international ships as well as South African training ships to make sure they have got the required sea time to become ship's officers. We're also looking at uh, creating partnership between South African industries um, and the international community, so in the international partners in developed countries to see how we can um, increase the competitiveness of South African industries, maritime industries. They looked at the country as a whole and they identified that there is a need for an institute like Saimi. Um, and in the meantime, while Saimi discussions were, uh, were going on, they actually took on uh, some of these initiatives like the National Cadet Program. It was run by SAMHSA and many other programs that gradually we are taking over from SAMHSA, working very closely in partnership. Um, I have meetings with the SAMHSA CEO on a monthly basis to discuss these issues um, and these projects and report to him in terms of progress as where, where we are with this. The high level goal within uh, Operation Pekisa, not Ocean's Economy, but broader Operation Pekisa, is uh, job creation. Um, and looking at high level of unemployment and to see how we can address that. Um, the government is there to, to create an environment for industries to be able to become competitive. Um, all those policy changes are ongoing. Uh, what we do is that we work very closely with industry associations to make sure that their voice is heard at the highest level. Um, so um, they sit in, uh, on our uh, advisory committee, we interact with them individually, like as I said with, with Saoga's case, that we work with them uh, to identify and, and to understand the sector's uh, skills needs over the next few years and make sure they are available. Uh, and those are relayed to the ministers uh, in, in order to make sure that policy environment that the industry needs is in place to make sure that our industries are competitive. South Africans are being trained in the maritime industry. During the training program, we were sailing a lot. Uh, we sailed, uh, I mean, out of the country. Uh, sometimes we sailed here in South Africa, sometimes in West Africa. Yeah, we sail around during our training. 
but most part of it, it's in the engine room. That's where we get hands-on on the machinery and learn knowledge of how the machinery works uh, and all about engines. Uh, and also, we also get to learn uh, how the ship is, how the ship is there, yeah, from when it's moving from port from one place to another. Uh, my dream is to grow in this industry and become a chief engineer and help other South Africans know about the maritime industry and how good it is, how opportunities it brings in your life and other things, good things it brings. Be the prime navigator of the vessel. So what I do is I plan the passages um, from one port to another which are then approved by the captain and the company and then that is where we get to our next destination. I am also the medical officer on board um, so I did a short medical course so let them get used to it. We're here to stay. My cadet ship uh, with this vessel and then after I went to the, one of the international companies uh, which is Oachful or Seven the Tankers. Uh, it was quite interesting. I was the only female and uh, I was the only African there. So for the past six months, then you have to be answering those questions like, uh, why did you choose maritime status? And uh, why are you here? Because most of the female did not bother themselves about this career. But yeah, what I can say to everyone is that uh, maritime, it's not like, uh, it's a gender specific, it's for everyone. So I also encourage other female that they can join us. I still see myself as a captain, so yeah. The Port of Nuha is a world-class deep water transshipment hub offering an integrated, efficient and competitive port service for containers in transit to global markets and within the sub-Saharan Africa region. And the port forms part of the Kuha Industrial Development Zone. much de deeper capability. I mean, you've got the Koha River that's coming down here. You've got a basin that can allow you a whole lot of things. You've got the special economic zone right behind and um, hundreds of thousands of hectares that are not developed today. No, maybe not hundreds of thousands, thousands of hectares. And so it helped you. There is so much traffic. If you analyze the traffic around the coastline of South Africa, you've got ships that are carrying normal trade. Big ships, it's called cave sizes. Those that can't go through the Suez Canal, they must round the cave. Now, those big container vessels, most of them, they round the cave. Certainly, tankers and big bulk carriers, they all go around the cave. Now, all of a sudden, you've got this ship that's going to spend 43 days from Brazil to China. Once they get to day number 21, they need some fuel. And then it helps us to, to be able to replenish that ship. And so we figured out that if you locate a facility, particularly in the Port Elizabeth area, you are able to service ships. It's not too big a diversion from their normal route to come towards PE. Then they take um, um, fuel. And whilst they are there, then they take um, stores, food, um, repairs to their crew change. So Kuha, as it were, lends itself so well for that facility. And in fact, the Port Elizabeth Basin, to be exact. You've still got a great deal of oil activity there. And you've got a whole lot of oil rigs, offshore support um, 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 ships like the ones that we have here. Um, these ships, they are here because they are in close proximity to where their work is. Now, all you need here, the ships are already here, is to put that manufacturing capability such that you can do a whole lot of repairs, supply a whole lot of spares. Ships, they suck up a lot of money. And uh, if you are able to provide everything that they need, you're going to provide a whole lot of economic opportunity. And that's exactly why we said there, bring this activity here 
see South Africa as a place where you can do these repairs because by necessity we're perfectly located where we are. SAMSA itself is an agency of the Department of Transport which was essentially formed firstly to look after the safety and compliance elements of South Africa in respect to what the world requires of maritime transportation. Dedicated maritime area which we're developing. We've been involved in maritime for about the last four years in terms of planning. The reason for that is Kuga, the Kuga port is growing, um, adding quite a number of ships coming into the port and from that reason we anticipated that repairs will be required. Um, the repairs is done to rigs and there's also repairs coming from different um, gas and oil areas like risers that's done by companies like Algoa Pipe and Steel. So um, we kind of anticipated to start building facilities right on the port boundary to service these companies. We have been involved in the bunkering side and we believe that there's a whole lot of development happening in South Africa in the bunkering side. Algoa Bay is the first area where ship-to-ship -ship bunkering is happening. Um, those ships that's coming in for bunkering will need um, small craft to service them from um, water barges to slop barges to food um, and, and crew changes. Our apprenticeship programs runs for a minimum of three years. We also have a learnership training for all those trades that I've just previously mentioned. It normally takes a, a one year of training. Uh, most of the training is done with the learnerships internally on institutional side. Thereafter the learners get placed for workplace experiential training. Many of the apprentices that we had uh, over the three years there was 122 in the first group and we have been successful to put 119 of those learners through the trade test. Many of them have been absorbed in the Eastern Cape and the surrounding areas in some of the industries. Others have chosen the route of entrepreneurial ships where they form their own little small companies like many of our welding apprentices and as well as a few of our electrical students. Mossel Bay is the smallest of the commercial ports along the South African coast. The Pakisa project underway is an upgrade of the slipway. The port of Cape Town, strategically positioned almost at the southern tip of the African continent, serves cargoes moving between Europe and the Western Hemisphere and the Middle East and Australia, especially containers. The reason why uh, this dock is so essential to Cape Town, it is in actual fact, um, it's an um, economic hub. And economic hub in a sense of we um, actually do um, great service to the Western Cape economy. The Port of Cape Town Pakisa projects include the refurbishment of the Robinson Dry Dock, refurbishment of the Starock Dry Dock, refurbishment of the Synchro Lift, replacement of 10 cranes for ship repair, replacement of water circulating pumps at Starock Dry Dock, widening and lengthening of the repair key. Basically a caisson is a jargon for a gate. It's a gate which closes 
uh, water into and out of this area. The service that the TNP offers is to offer uh, 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 the place where the ships can come for repairs. And then when the ships come here for repairs, uh, jobs are created because welders come in, uh, people that are skilled come in, uh, people that are semi-skilled come in and get employed, people that are also unskilled, they come in and get employed, and also they get skilled as well because they get exposed to the uh, operations that happen uh, within the dry dock. What we have here is our 6x1 station BTS simulator. Um, what it does is it, uh, it's part of the training program for, for VTS, which is Vessel Traffic Services and Vessel Traffic Management. Um, on the screen here is the supervisor station. It's uh, Port of Cape Town. And what we do is we simulate um, uh, vessel movements, vessel traffic movements, and this enables the operators then to undergo the training that will assist them in navigating, setting up uh, um, destinations, uh, birth control, stuff like that. Um, what it also does is it uh, makes available the radar systems um, and the automatic identification systems, also known as AIS. Well, South Africa, in fact, is the first country in Africa to have solid state radars. Um, we introduced them about two years ago, and at that point, I think we were probably the fourth or fifth country in the world to introduce solid state radars. We have a full coastal automatic identification systems which enable vessel traffic uh, along the coast. And this forms part of uh, PAKISA Initiative 6, which is the Integrated uh, Oceans and Coastal Information Management System. And into that we feed the radar systems, the satellite systems, um, all the buoys, the oceanographic systems, hydrographic systems, um, from the Department of Environmental Affairs, from the, the Navy, and from Defense Intelligence. So it brings all of that data together, and it enables access by other state departments uh, to assist them carry out their various mandates for the various, um, yeah, for the departments. The importance of tourism and the waterfront development. Marine tourism or coastal marine tourism has been recognized as one of the vital, vital sectors that could accelerate the growth of uh, Operation Ocean Economy and the contribution to the blue economy. Part of my portfolio now is actually to drive the ocean economy and to align certain aspects of the waterfront with Operation Pakisa. Um, the waterfront, uh, as most people would look at it and think of it, is just a, a shopping centre, but we're actually much more diverse than that. And uh, our, our mission and our founding principles was always about the water and keeping the water at the centre of our business. We won it in 2000 and, uh, 2015 and we've managed it from December 2015. Uh, this season we'll have over 100,000 passengers and crew through that terminal. The season actually ends at the end of May and uh, we've had 44, we'll have had 44 vessels visiting us over that period of time. Um, over and above the fishing industry in, in, the, in the waterfront, we've also got research facilities. Aligned with that is also our involvement with ocean racing. Uh, one, of the, one of the big things for ocean racers such as the Volvo, the Velux or the Clip Around the World challenge is the ocean racing in the Southern Ocean. We are going to be establishing the ocean racing platform here at Eski and that will involve a training facility, a trust, and through that, we will, we will also provide some of the skills in respect of boat building with who we associate with. I think in, in respect of our alignment with Operation Pakisa and the ocean economy, I think one, when you look at the waterfront, is that you should be looking at the waterfront as an enabler for activities. And however small that activity might be here, it is happening in the waterfront. So, so the alignment with all those key aspects of Operation Pakisa to the ocean economy is actually happening here. Fishing, boat building, boat repairs, boat commissioning, education, sailing, training of the youth is all happening on this facility in some form and manner. We have just completed a transformation. We were 70% Dutch owned and 30% locally owned and we completed that South African success story in December of 2016 where we are now 100% South African owned we are 59% black owned, we are 14% woman owned, and we are probably the preeminent specialist services 
company for marine services in South Africa. And I'm personally very proud of that. So what are we doing to plow back to South Africa? Uh, well, we are building ships locally. We have completed a 170 million rand two-vessel boat contract with Darman, and we are on contract to the Beers. So we are also exporting our expertise to the Beers for diamond mining, albeit in Namibia. We employ 550 people in the country, in the company, of which 80% are black. In terms of Operation Pakisa, there's obviously the partnerships with communities where we operate, like in Port Nolith, for example, or in the Eastern Cape, or in Mossel Bay, where we involve the community in our activities through supplier development, through enterprise development initiatives, uh, and then our own training and development initiatives in the company to get our people and our employees up to a level of proficiency. It's operations uh, like Pakisa that, uh, that, that help bond the industry and bring everyone together to reinforce that, that consciousness around uh, making things happen in the maritime industry. We're obviously not the only country building the vessels that we do. We compete against China, Singapore, uh, the US, parts of Europe, uh, Dubai. Uh, a lot of these destinations base costs are lower than South Africa. So the only way we can compete is by having the right level of skills available uh, that can work in an efficient uh, uh, environment to, to ultimately uh, ensure that your products are well priced. So we, we are constantly working on a skills development program within our organization. Um, we have an apprenticeship program which has been very successful, um, not only upskilling people from our own communities, bringing people in from the rest of the country. So one of the exciting elements of uh, Operation Pakisa is the involvement that we're getting from the Department of Trade and Industry where they are assisting us with the bilateral relations with uh, other countries and other governments in Africa and making life a lot easier for us to develop those relations on a very credible level so that our, our customers have faith in uh, doing business with South Africa and with South African companies. It cannot be okay, bending and as qualification as means, but in Tendo Figa Gulenda, we are both Club on Africa and our Tanda Konum Sevens because that in Oibona Tandi Bugale is a manzi. This girl would number Yenzo and Dim Lando Yambangaman, the Pai Italaban, the Akulapo and his own motor, take a corner again, the Kalan, the Itanda, and I'm the two If you are interested in welding, I'm sure it's something you have to explore. There's a lot to learn, it's exciting, you know, and for a woman coming into this industry. It's, it's not easy, but it is exciting. There's a lot of challenges, but at the end of the day, if you want to get into it, the money is not bad, you know, and most companies you go and work for, they offer in-house training. So getting into this industry, that might be your only block, but coming into the industry as a cleaner, like we have here, you know, now a coded welder. So get into it, expose yourself to it, try it out. It's you won't be sorry, basically. It is, it's the most exciting thing I've ever done. You know, when I talk about welding, it's like I talk about my children. I get all excited and, you know, because it, it's an art. Every day you do something different. I started working on the floor as a boiler maker. I worked there for eight months until I got an opportunity, a development role opportunity, to come and work in the office as a junior draftsman. Then I got that opportunity and I started working here. I do detail work, which is production drawings that we send to the floor. And the thing is, if the guy on the floor can't manufacture or produce what is on the drawing, then the drawing is irrelevant. So basically I have to make sure that whatever I put out, the guy on the floor can be able to produce it. This is basically what I've been working on um, to date. This is what we call a fire and safety plan. So basically this is where we keep all our emergency equipment on the boat. So basically this is shows where the stuff is, like your life rafts, where your HMIs are, where your fire detectors are and everything else on the boat. So it's a beautiful feeling, it's, it's, it's like what you've created, you're seeing it alive basically. It's like <coughs> taking a, an idea and making it alive, it's creation, it's beautiful work. These two vessels here, um, sister ships, um, they're going to be ferries that will leave in May um, for delivery to the Ivory Coast. And um, it's part of a, a big transport uh, system that's operating in the waterways in Abidjan. Um, so there are 18 vessels that uh, will be delivered to them. The first one's already there, this is two and three. 
We have uh, two 35 meter patrol and security vessels um, being built simultaneously back to back. Um, these, uh, this is our, our flagship design. Um, this is vessels uh, 9 and 10 of this particular design that we've done. And um, they, they uh, are going to be deployed into Nigeria, into West Africa. And their primary focus is to patrol and provide security for, for the oil fields. Situated on the west coast of South Africa, the port of Saldana remains the largest and deepest natural port in the southern hemisphere, able to accommodate vessels with a draft of up to 21 and a half meters. Saldana is unique in that it has a purpose-built rail link directly connected to the jetty bulk loading facility for the shipment of iron ore. And obviously then there's also Saldana uh, where we need to look at the oil and gas facilities that we're currently working on. And there's again extensive work that has happened in that uh, respect and we are almost certain that yes, we will achieve the target set by, uh, to us by the labs. I believe that the, the mussels and the oysters that are cultivated in Saldana Bay are actually the best in the world. So, um, uh, and it's expanding all the time, so that is very much a part of Operation Pakisa. As well as if you look down the quay, you will see that there are a number of sea harvest trawlers here, and um, that is actually the whole maritime sector is developing. Um, and there are a lot of local people employed. Um, there are a lot of people employed in the factory here at Sea Harvest. Uh, I, I think it's actually the biggest uh, employer in, in the West Coast, actually, and in Soldana Bay, certainly, of people. Um, that's uh, people working in the factory come from a far field as Hopefield, um, Friedenburg, St. Lena Bay. So there's a lot of employment here in the marine field. The Oceans Economy Aquaculture Projects coexist with port activities in the port of Saldana. The Operation Pakisa Oceans Economy Projects in the port of Saldana Bay include the offshore supply base key, the Berth 205 rig repair facility, and the Moss Gas Jetty Ship Repair Facility. The IDZ itself is a targeted specific uh, IDZ that was designated in 2013 by Minister Davies. Our sector specific focus is on upstream oil and gas and marine repair and manufacturing. Um, it's those sectors that we wish to attract into the IDZ. Uh, we're also one of, I think, the first IDZs that were designated in and around the port of Saldana Bay. So what makes it really adds to the value proposition of the IDZ, particularly in line with the industry focus that we have, because what that means is vessels coming into the bay now have the ability to land and operate from the quayside right into the back of port area in the IDZ framework. IDZs are the vehicles where you can offer a customs controlled area or internationally it's known as a free port regime. And really it's about cutting the red tape in customs uh, uh, administration um, and landing of you know, uh, goods that are being imported for um, value added uh, processes. And the industry really appreciates that because really that's the benchmark of how this industry, uh, upstream oil and gas and marine, operates internationally. What is important to us is to realize local and regional successes. And in order to do that, we need to bring the community along this development path to allow the benefits of the IDZ, of these of this opportunities that are being unlocked, to actually filter through to the community. And in that regard, we've focused our uh, priorities on two areas, skills development and enterprise development. The Pakisa process itself really was a landmark process, a landmark moment really, to say the whole of South Africa is geared and wants to gear towards the ocean's economy and working with all of the multiple role players in one instant, in one table, in one room was really uh, um, quite, quite fundamental to, to, to the journey that we've experienced and, th and the successes that we've had on the IDZ and the exposure that we've had internationally and locally on, on marketing and uh, um, 
you know, uh, developing the IDZ. So the ability to collaborate in the thinking, in the solutioning, um, in the initiatives that flowed from that process was really um, quite useful. And uh, I think that's why we throw our weight behind the, 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 the working groups that have come about. Uh, we're active in four working groups. At the moment, I'm actually busy surveying sea harvest uh, trawler and just to make sure that uh, the vessel is safe in all respects to go to sea. Um, as far as Operation Pakisa goes, um, if you actually look behind you, you will see that there are a lot of mussel uh, barges and mussel farms here. We have aquaculture as well in the bay. Actually doing the survey and it's done annually on board the ship to ensure that the ship is in a sound seaworthy condition. We check, um, we check aspects such as the navigation charts um, and then what we do is we check like uh, for instance all your navigation equipment we make sure that all the navigation equipment is working correctly um, if you have a look here we we check all the controls on the bridge that the bridge controls are operating efficiently we check, um, we check things such as the radars um, the echo sounders um, all the ship's controls, the navigation and electronic navigation charts, the GPS navigators. Um, and uh, once we've finished with all the documentation and all the instrumentation, then we actually ensure that um, the ship has sufficient flares on board, um, life jackets, life rafts, and we check that all the watertight doors are closing correctly. And then we go through the factory, we check the factory, um, we go through the engine room, we make sure that all the pumps are working efficiently, that the engines are working properly. So it's quite a big uh, process actually doing the survey and it's done annually on board the ship to ensure that the ship is in a sound seaworthy condition. Firstly, uh, to every service provider out there or a pot potential bidder who wants to tender, you become part of the uh, history in making because the facilities that we are going to be building out there are facilities that we would want to see them lasting as 40, 50 years, uh, depending on the lifespan of those facilities. That's so one thing is history that you are making. The second part of it is that obviously working with Transnet, you are working one of the stable state-owned companies where we can still assure that our service providers are paid within time and we are there to ensure that the, the, the opportunities that we, we, we provide are enabling to contract us and the, the environment is conducive. Lastly, uh, our supply development uh, within, within our bid uh, processes is so watertight that we are able to also include and attract emerging companies. Your triple BE uh, component is well uh, covered within the space that we work on and we certainly are assuring that it becomes very easy uh, for us to work with um, uh, our service providers and they enjoy uh, bidding with us.